It's good to be here with you today. My name is David Effler, and I'm pastor of Matthew 633, open our ministry. Uh, today's June the 11th. Boys, it's amazing how fast uh, the the time is passing here. Just in a few days, the summer will be, or the year will be half over, and it's kind of hard to believe that. Uh, but friend, I'll tell you, we're another day closer uh, to being with the Lord. Amen. And I praise his name that I have that hope today down in my heart and soul. Amen. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12 this morning. Uh, by the help of the Lord, we ask you to be much in prayer. Uh, there are several people out there, and I've still got some needs. God knows my heart. And uh, we're not completely recovered from our surgery yet. And... Uh, uh, it bears heavy on my mind at times, and, and I appreciate, though, the prayers of everyone. And so we want to get into Hebrews chapter 12 by the help of the Lord this morning. I want to start reading in verse 1. It says, We're foreseeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience uh, the race that is set before us. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy uh, that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, uh, and he sat down at the right hand of the house of God. For consider him who, uh, him that endured such uh, contradictions uh, of sinners against himself, lest ye uh, be weary and faint uh, in your minds. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and read just a little bit more in that. Uh, uh, I thank the Lord for the, the rest of this down through here. It says, You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Uh, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son, uh, whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, uh, God daily with you as with sons, for what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? I want to stop right there just a minute and I want to uh, go on over into the chapter just a little bit. Uh, I'd like to call your attention this morning to verse 22 uh, through 26, probably this morning. And we'll start reading in verse 22. She says, But ye are come unto the Mount Zion, uh, and unto the holy city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and into an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly uh, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, unto heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Uh, see ye, refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who, who refused him uh, that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh uh, from heaven. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning by the help of the Lord. I want to talk on uh, the the general assembly. We'll find that in verse 23. And we'll go back and look at that just for a moment. It says, To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, uh, and to spirits of just men made perfect. Amen. Now, when he's talking to the General Assembly this morning, friend, uh, he's talking to the church. Amen. Uh, and, uh, in general, the church encompasses a lot of denominations. I found out just today uh, that in, uh, we have about 3,300, uh, give or take a little bit, uh, uh, different denominations uh, in the world today. And uh, these 3,300 denominations, and it's talking about the, the Christian church, amen, and the difference, uh, the difference in people and, and, and all of these. And uh, I would like to report to you this morning, amen, that I, I go to a church that preaches Jesus Christ and Him crucified, 
uh, for the remission of sin. Amen. My home church. Uh, and uh, the, the preacher preaches out of the old 1611 King James Version. Amen. And uh, we believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit of God in our assembly. We, uh, we uh, uh, got a wonderful pastor and we've got a lot of good deacons and and uh, we've got uh, people that uh, steps up to the plate when anything needs to be done, it'll get done. Uh, we're an older congregation, but the Lord has blessed us with uh, quite a few young people and, and some younger ones are coming on in. And I thank the Lord for that because the young people today, friend, uh, is the church of tomorrow. Uh, us old hands, after a while, we'll wire out and uh, uh, we'll go home to be with the Lord. And uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, amen. Uh, friend, whether it's by the rapture or whether it's by natural death, uh, in just a moment, friend, in a twinkling of an eye, you'll be with the Heavenly Father. Paul penned over the iron one place. He said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, it doesn't say anything else, or anything about any stopping off places, any places to, to stop and get rid of a bunch of bad baggage that you don't, that you don't want uh, and everything. The church, friend, is without spot and wrinkle. Amen. And it's going to present, be presented by God one of these days to his son, Jesus. Uh, it talks about a marriage supper over in the book of Revelations. And, and uh, I, I get to be there. I praise his wonderful name. Uh, that I've got a seat at that banquet table, amen. And my name was penned in the Lamb's book of, uh, of, of love, amen. And uh, God loved us. You, you, you'll read in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever uh, uh, might call on him and be saved by God's marvelous grace, believe in him. And I thank God that it's that way, friend. Uh, God made it universal, uh, and he sent his son into this world. He may not just for a handful of people uh, down here in the Bible Belt of the United States, he may, uh, but all over this world, friend, uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is being preached. He may, and you say, what is that gospel? Well, Paul penned in Roman, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 or 2, no, chapter 2, down about verse 1 or 2, somewhere's in there. He said, Brethren, I saved to know nothing among you, uh, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And the preaching of Jesus, and the Bible said, and another place over there, he said that the foolishness of preaching, uh, uh, friend, the lost world sees it as foolishness. Amen. But to you and I, friend, that is uh, saved by God's marvelous grace, it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. It's where we get our power. It's where we get our peace. It's where we get our strength. Uh, you know, where we get those things that we need. Look back up into chapter 12, verse uh, 13 and 14. Listen to what it said. Uh, let's actually go back up to verse 12. It says, Wherefore lift up uh, the hands which hang down uh, and the feeble knees. It says, And make straight paths for your feet, lest uh, that which is lame is turned out of the way and uh, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace. Verse 14. That's the one that was on my mind. He says, and follow peace with all men. Amen. And holiness uh, without uh, which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Now, you've heard it said by uh, a lot of our holiness brethren. And that's just a name that's hung over the door, friend. Uh, there's no other way to come in but by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14 uh, said over there, Jesus did in his own words, and it's read right in my book. Uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, whether it's a Baptist preacher preaching or whether it's a holiness preacher preaching, a Methodist preacher, a uh, Church of God preacher, a uh, Church of Christ, uh, you know, Presbyterian preacher, and that's just to name a few, the, the prominent Christian churches that's around in this area. Uh, amen. We've got uh, the First Christian Church and, uh, uh, and also in our area. We've got several churches around here. But as far as I understand and as far as I know, uh, there's a lot of people that goes to the Lord. And, and there's a lot of people that will raise their hand and say, I'm saved by God's marvelous grace. Well, how did they get saved, friend? Uh, and how did they become a part of the general assembly of the church. Amen. They became a part by accepting uh, 
uh, the gospel preaching, amen, by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. The Bible says you're, a begot you're begotten by the Word uh, and you're drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. When God begins to draw you, friend, uh, He'll draw you through His Word, amen. Uh, uh, the psalmist David penned over in uh, the book of Psalms, I think 119, he said His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, amen. And uh, uh, so his word, friend, is something that uh, that brings comfort down in our heart and soul. Psalms 23, uh, the psalmist David over there said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. You know, those things that he's talking about there, he's, he's lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, amen. He said, He made me to uh, 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 lead, leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His same, name's sake. Uh, right living, friend, can be had if you'll only allow the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of God uh, to work through you and, and to work in the church. Now, uh, you friend, well, friend, uh, a lot of people will look at you and say, Well, do I have to go to church to be saved by the grace of God? No, friend, you don't. Uh, the Word of God can arrest your heart and your soul, show you lost and undone anywhere, at any time. Uh, amen. Down here on this earth, uh, if you find yourself uh, knowing that you're lost and you're headed for a place called hell, and you can feel the Holy Spirit of God speaking to your heart, knowing uh, that, uh, that He's telling you to come to a man called Jesus. Amen. If you'll accept that and believe it, down in your heart, the Bible says, uh, thou shalt be saved. Amen. So when I think about the general assembly, I'm talking to you about the church. Amen. The one that God purchased, uh, amen, with his own blood. The one that's without spot. Uh, the one uh, that is uh, uh, without wrinkle. The one that is perfect uh, in the eyes of God. And you say, well, what makes us so perfect? The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. When God sees me, friend, he sees the blood, and that's what he sees. Amen. Uh, he's not looking for anything else. Uh, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, let's look back over there at it just a minute. It says, Wherefore seeing we are all together uh, encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. My thought was when I read that verse of scripture uh, is what does the world see when they see me, amen, or when they look at me. And I would like to think, uh, friend, that I project uh, someone that is saved by God's marvelous grace. And I, I strive for that. Uh, you know, I strive to, uh, uh, you know, to work and do the things that I do. You say, preacher, do you fail? Yes, I do fail. And a lot of times when I fail, it'll be in front of somebody uh, if I uh, have a slip of the mouth or a slip of the tongue or something other like that or, or say something other, maybe use a byword or something. that it, I'm not talking about using the Lord's name in vain. I'm not talking about uh, using uh, uh, a lot of filthy and nasty language or something like that there. But these things that, you know, that, that we let slip. And, and uh, uh, sometimes the mouth speaketh. Uh, James penned over there that, uh, that the tongue was an unruly evil. It was full of deadly poison. Amen. Now, God made preparations for the tongue. Friend, if you'll ever pay attention to it, just smile right real big. And you can see a cage of ivory. Amen. Well, my tongue's just on the other side of that cage of ivory. Amen. And then not only was, uh, did he do that, but he put a veil of flesh over top of it so that you, you got to open your lips, open your mouth, then the tongue gets turned loose. Amen. So if most of the time it pays us to be careful, amen, when you're out there in the world and don't let your tongue get out of control, amen. And notice what he says in the latter part of verse 1. Uh, he, he said, uh, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And I've thought about that quite a bit. Uh, Paul, uh, James also penned over there concerning patience. Uh, and uh, he said, tribulation worketh patience. And uh, I feel like, friend, that uh, uh, down here in this world, that when tribulations come, 
Uh, we blame everything. We blame God. We blame uh, the neighbor. We blame the dog. We blame uh, our wife. We blame our children. We blame everybody but ourselves. But if we'll take the great big mirror and hold it up in front of us, and, and, and if you'll look right real close, friend, you'll see where the, where the blame lies. It lies right back with you. Amen. Uh, because if you, if you allow things to creep into your uh, life and into the church, that's the reason why that, uh, friend, uh, God's going to present it one of these days without spot and blemish. He's going to clean you up before you leave here. Amen. And if it means taking you out of this world to clean you up, he'll do that also. Uh, friend, you know, uh, God is a loving God. He is. Amen. But he's also a God that spires not the rod. Amen. And notice I read to you down there in verse 7. It says, if you endure chastening, chast chastising, God dealing with you uh, as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Amen. Now, God blessed us with two children, my wife and I. And uh, uh, I've never beat on my kids, but now I have spoke to them. Uh, I have given them spankings and whoopings. Amen. Down through life. You say, preacher, you sound like one of them old fogies. Amen. Well, my daddy whipped me uh, when I done wrong. And his daddy got whipped when he done wrong. And his daddy got whipped when he done wrong. Uh, amen. And, uh, you know, the Bible says over in the Old Testament over there, it says, uh, spare not the rod. Amen. Uh, you, you've got to, you've got to, you have to use a little chastising once in a while. Uh, to bring your children into line. That's one of the reasons why we've got a generation out there today uh, that has no regard for anyone. They have no respect for anyone. Uh, they, don't, uh, they, don't ha they don't have no conscience. They don't have no feelings. You man, they've allowed these uh, video games and stuff like that to raise their children. Uh, and they've let them, uh, every ungodly thing in the world is in their mind and in their heart. Uh, and uh, friend, when you're allowed to grow up like that, you need to expect a, a model citizen out of, out of one of your children when they grow up in that kind of uh, uh, environment, that kind of situation. Uh, if they've never been chastised, the Bible says without chastisement, then you're bastards and not son. You say, preacher, I want to use that word. Amen. Well, it's written down here in the book. I didn't uh, 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 say anything other than what's written in the word of God. Amen. Uh, you and I today, uh, so we're being chastised. Why is the chastisement needed? Amen. Uh, so that we'll learn how to behave in church. So that we'll learn how to conduct our lives in our daily walk. Amen. So that we'll learn how to love people and have consideration and, and, and kindness uh, toward people. There's a verse of scripture in the book of Jude. Let me read it to you right real quick. It won't take me just a second to find it. It's a it's a verse of scripture that uh, a lot of people it would pay you. Uh, if you don't have this marked in your, in your Bible, uh, you might ought to go over and mark that and listen to what it says. In Jude, it's just got one chapter, but in verse 22, and it says, And, and some, having compassion, making a difference. What about that? And some, having compassion, Making a difference. Well, how do you learn to have compassion? Amen. Then you learn that someone has the rule over you. Amen. And he's telling the church here. Uh, amen. And he's trying to, uh, to bring out some things to them. Uh, and everything, like I said, back up in verse 13. It says to make straight, uh, to make straight paths for your feet. And that first part of that verse. Make straight paths for your feet. And then if you've got a problem, he said you can have a healing. Amen. The healing comes. Amen. What did uh, 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 the psalmist David say about paths over there? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Amen. You know, we're not left out here, friend, without any help, without any hope. Amen. When you become a child of God, you become a child of God. Uh, amen. And he doesn't just leave you out there. He begins to feed you with the sincere uh, milk of the word of God. And, and as you're able to grow in grace and knowledge, then you get into the stronger me uh, of the word of God. Let me read a verse of scripture to you over in Psalms 89, uh, verse 7. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful verse of scripture. And uh, the psalmist David, he, uh, uh, he he'd set, uh, in the verse 
Psalms 89, verse 7 and 8, listen to what it says. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly. In the, what assembly? The church uh, of the saints. And to be had in reverence of all. Amen. Them that are about him. The Lord God of hosts, who is a who who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Amen. So he's just saying there that, uh, that, that God is to be feared in the assembly. Amen. Now, I'm a firm believer in being led of the Holy Spirit of God, but I'm also a firm believer that things should be done in decency and order in the house of God. Amen. God set forth an order before the foundation of this world. And he's not deviating from that order. And he's allowing that order to take place. Uh, and, and it's going to run its course all the way down to the end of this thing. And uh, uh, Jesus came in the order of Melchizedek. Uh, and he's sitting now at the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercession or he, he is interceding for you and I. Uh, the church, amen, and uh, he's taking care of, of all of all of the world's church, amen, and uh, you know, so God has got an order, and I believe that we are to act decent, uh, we're not to get out of hand, we're not to stand up and rebuke the, the, the pastor of the church, amen, uh, I think that we are to be uh, uh, acceptive of the Holy Spirit of God. You say, how do you be acceptive of the Holy Spirit of God? When God moves on your heart, friend, uh, to do something, do it. Amen. Simple as that. Now, I understand, and you understand too, when the man of God's up a preaching, uh, amen, we're to, we're to uh, you can amen the word, you can raise your hand, uh, uh, you know, at the word, and, and everything like that right there. But he's got a time that he'll stand, the man of God. And, but before that time, and most of the time, the man of God, if he's truly a man of God, he'll give you an opportunity, if God's laid anything on your heart, for you to uh, stand up and testify. Uh, if you want to uh, shout, praise God, uh, whatever, sing a song, different things like that right there. Uh, you know, it's all in order, you man. Uh, I had a pastor one time, uh, years ago, he said, jump just as high as you want to, shout just as loud as you want to, but he said, make sure when your feet hit the ground that you walk straight. And, and that, you know, to me, that was some really good advice, amen. And I love it when the Spirit of God moves, amen. I love it when God begins to ring my heart and the fountains of my eyes are opened up and, and, and I get just a little while to praise him for what he's done for me, Amen. And let's go, look back at verse 23. He said, To the general assembly uh, and the church of the firstborn, amen, uh, which are written in heaven. I thank God today that my name is written in heaven. It's written in the Lamb's book of life, uh, amen. And one of these days, uh, because my name is in the Lamb's book of life, and I already said that I've got a seat waiting for me at the marriage, uh, at marriage of the Lamb, amen. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, I had a waking dream and you say, preacher, do you believe in dreams? I do to a certain extent. I, sometimes you can't tell whether they're coming from a, a bad indigestion problem or whether they're coming from God. But I believe personally that this one came from God. Uh, God give me an opportunity, uh, a, a friend to see, uh, uh, that I was working in a, in a plan at that time. And I just knew that the coming of the Lord was just, I mean, just right now, right now. And I ran from place to place down through that, through that plant, talking to people, witnessing to them, trying to get them to, uh, to come to, come to Jesus and, and me trying to tell them that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming right now. And I run into a conference room and in that conference room, there was two children sitting there at the table. And this came to me before I had two children. And uh, there was two children sitting there at the table, and I looked around, I said, where's your mom? And they said, she stepped out of the room just for a minute. She'll be back. And uh, 
I, I, I turned around and I looked uh, through the, the windows in that place and just in a moment, uh, I saw a great flash of light and that's all I seen. And uh, uh, I did hear a noise. I, I do remember hearing the noise, but I don't know whether it was an explosion or whether it was a trump sound. I don't, I can't recall that. Uh, but I seen a flash of light. The next thing I seen, I was standing in line in heaven. And uh, they were handing white robes out to people. And uh, when I got up there, they handed me one. And, and I walked over, and there's my place. And I sat down. And just in a minute, uh, uh, the place was full. I mean, it was just as far as you could see, just banquet table after banquet table, as far as you could see, people sitting everywhere. And it was like that there was a loudspeaker that came from everywhere. And, it, and the voice that was on the speaker said, Jesus will be appearing just in a moment. Jesus will be appearing just in a moment. And I looked over there and it was like uh, the only way that I can remember ever seeing anything like that was when I was young down at our theater, they used to have curtains that they pull back over the screen years ago. And... Uh, uh, when they would pull that curtain back, then you would see. But it was like the curtains of a great stage began to open up. And just as it cracked a little bit, there was the most glorious, marvelous, brightest light that I'd ever saw in my life. Cracked as that curtains open, and it cracked open. And that quick, I woke up. And uh, you say, well... That just sounds like maybe you eat too many cucumbers and, and boiled eggs for supper. No, uh, friend, I believe it come from God. I believe that God showed me, friend, that I would be there uh, at, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Now, that was a long time ago. I was a really young Christian. Uh, I was uh, wrestling with a lot of things. This is before my children were born. I think I had one child at the time, didn't have two. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I got to see both of my children. I got to see that I was going to be in heaven uh, and we was all going to be there. Amen. You say, well, what does that do for you? It gives me encouragement down in my heart and soul. But more, greater than that, friend, greater than that, I have the word of God that tells me that I've got a place in heaven. Amen. Tells me uh, that I've got a, a seat there at the banquet table. Tells me that I'll see my Savior, friend, and he'll gird himself and begin to serve us. Amen. Remember when Jesus, after the last supper over there, uh, the Bible says that uh, he took an apron and wrapped it around himself. And he got a pan of water and began to wash the feet of his disciples. And when he uh, came down to where Peter was, Peter said, not so, Lord. And Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, if I wash thee not, you can have no part of me. And he said, not my feet. God washed me all over. And I thank God that down through the years, God's cleaned me up all over. Amen. You say, you, uh, are you that squeaky clean? No, I'm still got a few dirty spots. Amen. But God's working on them. And I praise his wonderful name that I'm a part of the general assembly of the firstborn. We all come in through the blood. Amen. Uh, and I praise God that, uh, that he allowed me to be a part of that. And Jesus, the mediator, verse 24 of the new covenant, amen. He's sitting there at the right hand of the father, friend, uh, and the blood of the sprinkling that, that he took up by his own blood, friend, and sprinkled on the mercy seat before the altar of God, friend, uh, that you and I might not have to suffer down here in this world. Now, uh, I'm not talking about the way that he suffered. He suffered the greatest and the most horrible death, I guess, anyone has ever ever had down here in this world. He took upon himself the sins of this world. And, 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 and he, he took them all. And they hung him on a cross at Calvary. And he died there. He said, Father, it is finished. Hanging on the cross at Calvary. You can find in John 17, down about verse 5 or 6, somewhere right along in there. Uh, in John 17, he said, Father, that that you have given me to do, I have done. Amen. And uh, I thank God today that he done what that needed to be done uh, so that I can have uh, salvation. Amen. He told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, 
uh, verses 1 through 7, if you want to go over and read that, he told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. Friend, if you're going to see the kingdom of God, uh, and, and you're going to see that marriage supper, you're going to see the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, uh, sitting there at all of those banquet tables, friend, uh, that's probably there. Now, that's just a vision in my mind. That's not in the book. Amen. He does talk about a marriage supper in the Word of God. Uh, amen. Uh, but uh, if you're going to see that, you've got to come through the blood. You've got to be born again. And, and uh, I praise His wonderful name, friend. You can be if you will allow God to speak to your heart and, and let it show you your need for a Savior. And then allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead you to the bleeding lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the book of Romans 8, 31. Let me read that to you right real quick. In the book of Romans, uh, I want to start reading in verse 31. And I'll leave you with this. Amen. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Say to these things. If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How, uh, how shall he not with him also freely give us? I like that. All things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Uh, it is God that justifies. Thank God I'm justified today. Through his darling son. Listen to what he said. Uh, who is he that condemneth? Uh, is it, it is Christ that died. Yet rather that is risen again. Uh, who is even at the right hand of God. Uh, who also maketh intercession for us. We just touched on that. And then verse 35. It says this. Now pay attention friend to this. Uh, once you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you get born into the family of God, the world can't touch you anymore. Amen. You're not of this world. Jesus said over there in John 17, Father, they're not of this world like I'm not of this world. Amen. There's a transformation goes through you. Friend, you become uh, uh, not of this world anymore. You're a heavenly being. Even though you're still in the flesh, you're a heavenly being. Listen to what it said. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of sword? As it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Boy, what a precious promise. Amen. Listen to what verse 38 says. He says, For I am persuaded, this is, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, that's the devil, friend, and his bunch, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friend, when you accept Jesus Christ, what a precious promise that we have in the Word of God. Friend, that the world can't touch you anymore. Amen. Uh, your only sin that you will have down here in this world. And the Bible says, God tempteth no man. Amen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away with his own lust. Amen. So now remember what I said over there in verse 13. Make straight paths for your feet. Amen. Walk straight. Run the race with patience that is set before us. Amen. We're running for what? Uh, that eternal prize that's on the other side. Amen. It's not works. That's already ours. We're just running out our life down here doing what we can for the Lord. That's the message God's laid on our heart. Amen.